Hello, my name is Anthony Shifkumar, and in today's video, we're going to do, we're going to talk a little bit about how the compiler works. There are four steps as to what makes uh, the compiler take your C code, which is nothing but a text file, into, say, a code that is executable on a processor, right? So where does the steps go? What kind of things or mechanisms does, does, the, does the compiler go through in order for it to transform your text file into an executable? And that's what this video is all about today. So the first step is to basically, the compiler does something called as pre-processing, which is it takes all these different macros and expands it into uh, the full version of what needs to be compiled. So let's figure out what that means. So what I have over here is a very simple program. Now I'm making it simple, not because it is simple, but to show like, what does this stdio.h really expand to? And before the compiler compiles, it really expands every one of these hash defines, then that's what a preprocessor does, right? So in order for us to see that, uh, let's have a look at what we're gonna basically go step one, do the preprocessing, and then we'll go to step two, step three, step four, before we actually get the executable. Now, when you just use GCC, say um, compile, say main.c, um, this is doing a lot of steps internally and we're gonna break them down. So the first thing that we're gonna do is something called the CPP, which is the C preprocessor. And the C processor, <clears throat> By default, the, G the GCC compiler calls CPP, but in this case, we're gonna break it down. So what does CPP do? So CPP, we're gonna give in the main file, main.c, and we're gonna see what this expands to. And we're gonna expand this to main.i. All right, and when I look at main.i, you'll see that this file, the simple main.c that we generally write in C and we use this stdio.h, which is a common, you know, hash include, all of a sudden is expanded to this mega, you know, file over here. And this is what the preprocessor does. It's like 732 lines of code, but it includes everything that the stdio.h actually has. And it could be any header file you might have. It will include, it's basically uh, destructing or deconstructing all the code that that header file has, or it could be any preprocessing for that matter of fact. And it's making it into a text file that has all the information so that the, so that the compiler in the next step can compile the code into the, um, into the assembly code. So this is what we have over here. It's a big file, right? And it has your printf statement. So when I search for printf, uh, this got the fprintf, it's got the printf, it's got the sprintf. So when I type in printf, it is able to, you know, it's there in this particular format. Um, and the linker will link, you know, the, this is just the header file. The linker will actually link the uh, actual uh, definition of the function. But this is what a preprocessor does, and this is the first step when it comes to compiling the code. The second step is to take the C code or this, um, um, you know, this expanded C code, as you want to call it, uh, the I code, it's called .i, and we want to basically generate the assembler code, which is also a text file, if you really think about it. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a GCC. Um, we can you know, do a wall, and you got to give the big S command. Uh, the S basically tells you that, tells the, um, tells the compiler that we are generating the assembly version of it. Uh, that's really it. Instead of compiling it, you know, do completely into an executable, you are basically telling the compiler, you know, just compile this without creating an object file. All right. So we put S and then we do main dot I. And what we have over here is a main dot S. And let's look at what the main dot S does. And this is the assembly code. So in here, it's basically generating the assembly code for this particular processor, which is the Core i7. Uh, and it's, you know, basically, uh, you know, assigning uh, how the, uh, what are the instructions before it can creates the, uh, the actual um, uh, object file. And here, here we have, say, you know, your, uh, the printf statement is nothing but puts um in some processes so, so you can see that that's you know it's figured out that you know that's what it needs to call 
Um, and it's doing uh, basically what these three lines of lines of code is doing uh, is basically it's all there in this particular assembly line. All right. And once you create the assembly code, you can now compile it. So the last step of the um, of the assembler is to basically uh, figure out what the uh, um, once it compiles it into the assembly code, now what we can do is prepare the assembler to, to convert it into the assembly language to the object file. Okay, so what we can do is basically do an AS, which is the assembler. Um, and here we have say hello, sorry, main.s. And we're going to give an output to main. And this is the third step. So the third step is converting this into an object file. So before it was just an assembler was just a text file, and now we're actually converting it into a file that you know can be executed. And the last part is basically the linking. It's not a dynamic executable. So now when I do a GCC to main.o, it's compiled into an actual executable. And then when I do an ldd.a.out. It's blinked all of these variables. Now, all of these uh, libraries, because this stdio.h actually all the definition of printf and vprintf and all the cool stuff uh, is actually in the libc um, shared object. So stands for shared object, uh, which is you know currently uh, in the location of slash lib x86 84 on my on my system. So if I do an object dump, obj dump, or even an nm actually, an nm of um, you know a dot out. If you really see, nm is allowing me to see all the address space that is compiled to uh, that this uh, particular uh, executable has. And the word puts is basically the printf statement over here, as we saw when we were doing the when we created the text file, tech, the, the assembly file in text in the text version. And this U stands for undefined. So T is the main uh, function over here. U stands for undefined, which means that it, it, it would probably try to pick up the library, it would try to pick up the, the address of this function during runtime. And, and when we do an LDD, that basically says that this particular um, library will probably one of these libraries should have the definition of puts. And as far as uh, as we know that libc has the definition of puts. So that's how all of this is actually working under the hood. So we've got basically the four steps. The first step was that we took the we basically generated the the preprocessor, which converted all those macros into a, a, um, an extended C file, if you want to call it. And then from the C file, we created the assembly text file. Then from the assembly text file, we created the assembly executable or the object uh, object file. And from the object file, we created the executable. And from the executable, we're just reading, you know, what are the addresses of each of these functions. And let's look at what the file is. So when I do a file.a.out, it tells me what exactly is this particular file. Uh, it tells me that this is an ELF 64 bit, um, you know, least significant bit, which is, you know, it, this is the endianness of the processor. It's working on a x86 64 bit version of the, of, a, of an operating system. Um, it's got a dynamically linked. It's, uh, the lib LD Linux 64, uh, shared object, uh, the build version, uh, it's running on GNU Linux. Um, it's not stripped. Um, yeah, and that's the uh, that's what this file is compiled into. So that's really what how a compiler works. So there's four steps, as I mentioned. There's the uh, preprocessing step. There is the assembly text, and then it generates into an object file. And from the object file, it generates you know the executable. And then from the executable, you can check you know all the links that all the linked uh, shared objects that are uh, associated with this particular executable, and that will be uh, that will be fetched during the runtime and execution of the system of the program. And now when we run the program, uh, it'll basically print hello world. So that's in a nutshell, what's going on in GCC. Technically, you never do all this, you know, step by step. Uh, you can directly combine GCC to uh, say uh, main.c uh, and it will automatically do all those steps internally for you. But if you had to break it down, this is how it would look like.
And that's all there is to this video. I just really thought it was really cool, you know, to uh, um, unravel some of the abstractions that go in the, when you just type in GCC. You really see, you know, what is, how your macros are, you know, expanded. Uh, what's happening in the in the assembly generation part? What's happening in the linking part? And how all of these things, you know, work together. Now, there's more to it. Now, you might want to know, you know, how does the it takes that text file and creates the object file. How does it pass all your text? How, you, how does it pass all your C file? And that's really getting into the compiler uh, architecture and how does compiler work? I'll probably do a video on that. I will talk about lexical analysis and you know how does it parse every um, or each string and each letter to making sure you know that the syntax is right and how does it build the whole thing. Uh, that's get gets into the internals of the compiler. Uh, but that will be beyond this this particular video. But there'll be a time when I will actually do that kind of video, and we really understand, you know, if you want to design your own compiler and make your own programming language, that'll be a cool video to have. Until next time, please subscribe to this channel if you want to get be notified when these new up, new videos are uh, uh, updated. Uh, like the video if you like the video, and uh, and comment below if you want to learn something more or if I missed something and you want to know more about it. Do comment below and. Uh, and yeah, and until next time, thank you.